Well, well, thank you, Larry. For obvious reasons, I prefer to count time in Jill Rose units. <laughs> it has been 10 years since the honor of the Jill Rose Award. It takes up to 10 years for a new drug uh, to receive FDA approval. Today, 10 angiogenesis inhibitors, uh, drugs that stop blood vessel growth to tumors, have received FDA approval, eight for cancer, two for macular degeneration, blood vessels in the eye, and two others approved in other countries not yet in the U.S. Uh, in 2006, more than uh, one and a half million uh, pa patients received prescriptions for angiogenesis inhibitors. But even more encouraging uh, is that there are at least 20 of these new drugs uh, close to FDA approval uh, in phase three, late phase three. Some of them will make it and coming after these are 30 others in phase uh, two, uh, 30 different companies. Uh, but there is still considerable room for improvement. Breast cancers produce up to six angiogenic stimulator proteins, and most of our, the drugs that we have now proved block one and some only two. Uh, they mainly block vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF. Uh, and now it has been learned that angiogenesis stimulator proteins that tumors make talk to each other. So that if one suppresses one angiogenic protein, VEGF, for say eight to nine months, another one comes up. There are backup systems in the uh, tumors, so FGF will emerge. Uh, and there's a whole recent book that's just out published by MD Anderson called Anti-Angiogenic Therapy of Cancer for Physicians and it has chapter after chapter about the different tumors. In fact, many of the chapters cite their support from BCRF. Uh, so uh, oncologists are learning now to use combinations of angiogenesis inhibitors, but we don't yet have angiogenesis inhibitors that are broad spectrum. And the history, the medical history of treating tuberculosis is very instructive. Before 1950, no drugs for tuberculosis, just surgery, and it was not effective. 1950, streptomycin, uh, an antibiotic for tuberculosis. Patients in the sanitaria stopped coughing up blood, but they still couldn't go home because they were still infectious. Uh, I, that, in 1953, when I was a first year student in medical school, they added a second drug uh, called PAS, paraminosalicylic acid. Patients started to go home. They were no longer infectious. By the time I graduated medical school, a third drug, isoniazid, and within 10 years, the sanitaria began to close all over the country. There's none of them open now. Three drugs, combinations, because the bacteria had backup systems. Very much like HIV and AIDS, uh, AZT came first, then there was drug resistance, and then they started to add other drugs, and after about three or four, uh, there's hardly much drug resistance. Um, but the most important lesson in the past few years is, that the, dis is the discovery that angiogenesis inhib inhibitors are in the body. It's at least um, uh, 28 of them. And they block a broad spectrum of, of uh, angiogenic factors, thrombospond and endostatin, tombstatin. They're not yet FDA approved, uh, although in other countries w one of them is. And the uh, famous gene P53 that defends the genome and is in most cells, and when you have cancer, it begins to be damaged or lost. loves endostatin and thrombospondin because it spends a lot of time keeping those at normal levels. And individuals with Down syndrome uh, also have high levels of these, uh, of these inhibitors, and they're protected against cancer. So among the exciting projects now being supported in our lab by BCRF, one of them is the discovery that the platelets the smallest cells in your body uh, carry all these angiogenesis uh, proteins, some inhibitors, some stimulators. You have a trillion circulating. You make 25,000 of eight days. And, uh, and the biggest surprise is that they collect and accumulate any angiogenic stimulators coming out of a little tiny tumor, a pinhead size. And when they die, they hand it off to the next generation, like real estate uh, planning. And, and what's interesting is that um, you, can wa you can take a sample and see in the playlist this uh, accumulation, and you can diagnose a recurrent cancer years before uh, you can see it or uh, uh, feel it. Uh, so they report it. So what we're beginning to do now, we have two clinical trials started, um, uh, 
at, at both at the Mass General and the Brigham and Women's Hospital in colon cancer first. Why colon and not breast? Because 50% of patients are cured after surgery and 50% are not. The recurrence is five years. Uh, can you pick up the recurrence in four, uh, four years ahead of time by a blood test before you can see it and then can you treat it? That's what the clinical trial is. Every patient gets a blood sample day before surgery and every three months uh, afterwards. So um, it's, uh, it's uh, become a very uh, interesting time because eventually we hope to treat the biomarker without seeing the tumor like you treat infection, you treat the, the white count. So I want to thank the uh, 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 foundation for support over the uh, years for actually um, helping us pursue ideas that are not, that were not originally obvious.